Captain Richard Phillips once embarked on a journey at sea, manning a ship with its cargo. It was during this voyage that the vessel fell prey to pirate attacks. Captain Phillips managed to save the lives of his crew members on that ship, and this video unfolds the story of how he accomplished that, and this film is based on real-life story of Captain Phillips. So let's dive into the main story of the movie. The movie begins by showcasing a beach in Somalia where some people are gathered, all armed with machine guns. The armed individuals approach a few locals around the Somali beach, and announce their intention to carry out piracy on a large ship in the sea. Who inhabit the coastal areas, facing financial struggles and food scarcity, resort to piracy on the expansive ships in the sea to sustain their livelihoods. Then they set off with a small boat and a large ship to commit robbery. After traveling a certain distance at sea, the pirates spot a large ship. This cargo ship was en route to Kilindini Harbor. The pirates managed to track the communication frequency of the ship, allowing them to eavesdrop on all the conversations happening inside the ship, including the captain's communications. Afterward, we are shown the large cargo ship. The captain of this ship is named Richard Phillips. Richard is aware that the route they are taking poses potential dangers for them. He remains cautious from the beginning, as there are no other cargo ships or vessels nearby on that route. Using his binoculars, Richard sees two boats approaching from a distance, heading towards their ship. Afterward, Richard sees on the ship's radar screen that the two boats are tailing them. At that moment, Richard instructs his crew members to turn the ship away from the approaching boats. As they maneuver the ship away, Richard observes that the two boats also change their course to follow them. Richard realizes that they are being targeted for piracy, and he promptly sends this information to the United States Navy to seek assistance. The operator then tells Richard, close all doors and windows on your ship. Those who are following you might be fishermen, maybe they are here to fishing in the sea. Captain Phillips responds to the operator, I know they're not here to fishing. With these words, Phillips ends the call. Afterward, Richard uses binoculars again to observe the two boats. This time, he notices that the boats are only about a mile away from them. Since the boats were approaching closely, Captain Phillips could see everything clearly. He observes that everyone on the boats has guns in their hands. Now, Richard is fully certain that those approaching in the boats are pirates. He then attempts to contact the police using the ship's radio signal, but he is unable to establish communication with them. Phillips had known that the pirates can hear everything he says. Using his presence of mind, he strategically informs the police that two boats are following their ship at sea. He says that, there might be pirates on those boats, and there could be a larger ship behind them. Saying this, Phillips changes his own voice to make it sound like the police, so that the pirates think the police are speaking. He says, within five minutes, the army helicopter will reach you for assistance. But in reality, Phillips didn't say anything through the radio signal, he was completely acting, because, he knew the pirates could hear him. So, using this tactic to intimidate them, Phillips successfully diverted their attention. Even though the two pirate boats and the large ship were scared away, but there was still another boat following their ship. Upon seeing that, Captain Phillips slowed down their ship and began to take the ship in a crooked direction. As a result, large waves formed in the sea. The impact of these waves caused the engine of the pirate's boat to fail. Capitalizing on this opportunity, Captain Phillips increased the speed of their ship, moving far away from the pirates. Later, all crew members of the ship gathered for a meeting. There they discussed what they would do if the pirates attacked their ship again. Then Captain Phillips tells them, the way we confronted them today, we'll confront them the same way tomorrow. But one of them says, fighting with the pirates is not our job. Our job is to transfer cargo from one place to another on the ship. So, instead of going this way, we'll change our route, so the pirates won't be able to find us. But Captain Phillips assures them, where we are in Africa now, there are a total of five teams of pirates operating on different routes. Every 300 miles, we'll encounter pirates. And for this reason, without wasting time, it is necessary for us to quietly leave Kilindini Harbor. After that, they set sail towards Kilindini Harbor. But the next morning, Captain Phillips sees another boat following them. So, this time he contacts the maritime police. Having made contact with the maritime police, Captain Phillips tells them, some pirates are following us. Then the police tell him, we are sending a team for you as quickly as possible. After that, we can see that Captain Phillips has activated the pressure pumps around the ship, so that due to the pressure from the water, the pirate's boat cannot reach their ship. However, 
This does not help, the pirates boarded their ship. Seeing the pirates attempting to board their ship, Captain Phillips, using a walkie-talkie, instructs the crew members on the ship to quickly hide inside the engine room. He emphasizes that until he tells them a password, no one should leave the engine room. After that, it is seen that the pirates have boarded the ship, and Captain Phillips, along with the others has them at gunpoint. Subsequently, the leader of the pirates, whose name Muse, he tells Phillips, you don't need to be afraid of us. We didn't come here to cause harm, we have come to negotiate with you. Hearing this, Captain Phillips informs the pirate gang's leader that inside this ship, there are only food and some documents, and we only have $30,000. If you want, you can take this money and leave. However, Muse does not agree with Captain Phillips' statement. He tells Captain Phillips to have all his crew members come to this location. Captain Phillips then announces for everyone to come there, but he still doesn't reveal any password. Consequently, none of the crew members come because Captain Phillips had stated that until he discloses the password, no one should come outside. After this, Muse says, I will go down and bring everyone up. Upon hearing this, Phillips responds, all right, but we need to ensure that the emergency room's light stays on. If the light goes off, we won't be able to see anything down there. When Captain Phillips spoke this, cleverly he turned on the switch of the walkie-talkie, so that all the crew members could hear him, and they should turn off the emergency light switch so that the pirates don't find them. At that time, one of the crew members goes to shut down the generator, and another goes to fetch drinking water. On the other side, Captain Phillips is accompanied by the leader of the pirate gang and two other pirates, heading towards the lower part of the ship. Captain Phillips was willingly taking the pirates to the wrong place, where the crew members were not present. However, on the way, Muse notices a map on the wall. Looking at the map, Muse understands that the ship's engine is further forward. And then he tells the captain, take me to the engine room first. Phillips says, all right. But the engine room is very hot, so we need to bring water with us to drink. Captain Phillips then goes with the pirates to bring water. However, one crew member of the ship was already present there. Captain enters the room and notices him. Meanwhile, Muse was behind Captain Phillips, he also about to enter the room. At that moment, Captain tells him, you don't have shoes on your feet. If you enter this room without shoes, you might get hurt. Then they leave from there, and the crew member inside hears what Phillips said. So, using the walkie-talkie, he informs the other crew members that the pirates don't have shoes on their feet, and they are coming towards them. He advises them to place glass shards in front of the door. Subsequently, the crew members in the engine room placed glass shards in front of the engine room. When the pirates reached there, one of them was injured in the leg by a piece of glass. By that time, all of them had reached inside the engine room. At that moment, suddenly the light in the engine room goes off. The crew member who went to turn off the generator, he had turned off the generator, causing the lights to go out. Due to this, Muse becomes very agitated. He asks Captain Phillips, what is happening? Phillips then tells Muse, I don't know anything, I've been with you all along. I think we should go to the ship's deck. After that, Muse tells to Phillips, take my injured companion with you to the deck, I'm looking for your other companions. After that, Captain Phillips takes Muse's injured companion with him to the top of the ship. Then Muse searches for the crew members in the engine room of the ship. At that moment, the crew members find Muse alone, and they attack him, capturing and restraining him. The crew members then inform Muse's remaining companions, stating that they have captured their leader. They demand Captain Phillips and their other companions to be released, otherwise, they threaten to harm Muse. Captain Phillips tells the pirates, We know, you don't have a boat, if you want, you can take our lifeboat. Moreover, we can offer you $30,000 along with it. The pirates agree to Captain Phillips's proposal. Subsequently, Captain Phillips hands over $30,000 to the pirates, and they let Muse go, and he also teaches them how to operate the lifeboat. After that, they release Muse. As Muse heads towards the lifeboat from the ship, they cunningly kidnap Captain Phillips, taking him hostage. After that, the robbers started leaving in the lifeboat. However, to save Captain Phillips, the ship's crew members went with their ships behind the lifeboats. On the other hand, it can be seen that the US Navy has come to know about Captain Phillips's kidnapping by then. So, they quickly deploy a drone to the scene. With the help of the drone, they continue to track the lifeboat. The pirates were taking Captain to Somalia, where many more pirates were stationed. Upon reaching Somalia, they plan to demand a significant ransom for the captain's release. 
Soon after, the U.S. Navy ship arrives near the pirate's lifeboat. Seeing the U.S. Navy ship, the pirates become frightened. At that moment, the commander of the U.S. Navy, he says, we will let you leave from here, but before that, you have to release the captain. Then Muse says, give us $10 million, and we will release Captain Phillips. The commander responds, $10 million is a significant amount of money, it will take a while to arrange that. In the meantime, we want to come to you to provide food and drink. Hearing this, Muse agrees because they had no food or water. The US Navy personnel then approach the lifeboat with two small boats. They state, we want to see Captain Phillips first. Then Muse took Captain Phillips's head out of the lifeboat and showed him to them. Then, Captain Phillips asked the Navy officers, does my family know where I am? They respond, yes, we have informed your family of everything. Phillips then tells them, I am in seat number 15 on the lifeboat, let my family know about this. In fact, Captain Phillips had mentioned this to get the attention of the US Navy officers. The pirates, seeing that Phillips is talking to the Navy officers, continue the conversation. At that moment, they shoot a bullet close to Captain Phillips's ear. On the other side, upon hearing the gunshots, the Navy commander instructs the officers to turn back. Afterwards, it becomes apparent that night has fallen, and the pirates are in a hurry to take Captain Phillips to Somalia. Once they reach Somalia, finding Captain Phillips will be a difficult task. Then Captain Phillips tells the pirates, I need to use the toilet. The pirates grant him permission to go to the toilet, but they send one of their associates with him. Taking advantage of this opportunity, Captain Phillips pushes him into the sea, giving him a shove, and he also jumps into the sea himself. The incident is witnessed by the US Navy, but in the darkness of the night, they are unable to fully understand what has happened there. Before the US Navy could reach there, Muse captures him again. On the other side, a helicopter carrying the US Navy SEAL team had arrived at the scene. They surround the pirate's lifeboat from all directions. At that moment, the US Navy commander communicates with Muse. He tells him that no matter how hard he tries, Muse won't be able to go to Somalia from there. However, if Muse releases Captain Phillips, they will let them go. But Muse knows that even if they release Captain Phillips, the US Navy won't let them go from there. So, Muse brings Captain Phillips outside the lifeboat, holding a gun to his head, warning that if anyone tries anything clever, he will kill the captain. The US Navy commander agrees to negotiate and suggests that one of them must come aboard their ship for the agreement. Muse reluctantly agrees to go to the Navy ship. Then, two boats from the US Navy approach the pirate's lifeboat. Using a clever tactic, they attach a line to the lifeboat, securing it with a grappling hook. This allows the Navy officers to control the pirate's boat and maintain the situation under their command. After that, it is observed that the Navy officers have secretly installed a device in the lifeboat. With this device, the US Navy will be able to listen to what is happening inside the boat. Then, the officers provide Phillips with a dress and instruct him to sit in his designated place after wearing it. Afterward, the Navy officers take Muse with them and leave the lifeboat. After that, large spotlights from the US Navy ship are focused on the lifeboat. As a result, those in the lifeboat couldn't see anything in front of them. Then it is observed that the snipers on the US Navy ship were targeting the remaining three pirates on the lifeboat. However, they were not all aiming at the same time. Later, it is seen that the Navy officers using the ropes they had tied to the lifeboat were attempting to pull it towards themselves. On the other side, Captain Phillips, sensing that he might not survive, begins writing a letter for his family. However, as he tries to write, one of the pirates starts fighting with him. The pirate ties Captain Phillips with a rope and blindfolds him. Then, another pirate suggests that the Navy officers are playing a game with them. They decide that they will shoot and kill Captain Phillips. Meanwhile, it can be seen that two robbers have come under the target of US Navy snipers. At the same time, the US Navy snipers communicate with their commander, informing him to stop pulling the rope of the lifeboat. When the rope stops pulling, the lifeboat gets a jolt. As a result, the three robbers are targeted by sniper. The snipers take their shots, killing the three pirates instantly. On the other hand, inside the US Navy ship, Muse knew nothing about all these events. When the snipers confirmed that three pirates were killed and Captain Phillips was safe, right then, they captured Muse and arrest him. Later, they rescued Captain Phillips from there, and that's where the movie concludes. So friends, this film is crafted around a real-life event. 
Captain Phillips invested almost a year to shake off the impact of this incident. After the lapse of a year, he resumed his duties. The movie hit the screens in 2013, earning an IMDb rating of 7.8 out of 10. Share your thoughts on how today's movie explanation resonated with you by dropping a comment below. I hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, whether you like it or not, please leave a like, because it inspires us to do another video soon. If the video truly moved you, please share it with at least two or three friends. And, of course subscribe to our channel and hit the bell. Because this is not the last video, more videos are on the way. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch the video. Thank you. Thank you so much.